Hey everybody, how's it going? It's spring. It's all melting. I've lost three quarters of the snow in my yard. Been pumping water this week and doing the things us prairie boys do when, uh, when the snow melts. This weather gives me a new sense of, it just, it invigorates me, makes me feel better. Uh, winter is tough and the last couple weeks of winter really start to wear a fella down. We had a massive snowstorm here a couple weeks ago. Kind of a weird storm, doesn't normally happen that way, but um, it just, it blew in and there was clearing snow again, but it's warm out. Just a nice day. I had both the doors open in the shop today, puttering. Started working on the 371 again. I got the cases apart. You'll see that on video and I threw them in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm still testing and tuning that thing to see uh, what chemicals I should put in it or just soap and water or, you know, so, and I'll give you guys that info as I figure it out. Um, got this thing barred up today, the 242 XP. XPG that is. I don't know if the heated handles work. We'll figure out when I run it. But uh, saw seems to run okay. It was a little bit of a hard starter when I first fired up this morning, but I uh, I played with the carburetor a little bit and it seems to have settled down. So what I'm doing today, friends, uh, I got a little tree job to do. Uh, I want to talk about the future of Tin Man saws in this channel. Uh, nothing bad, friends. It's completely awesome. But I got a little tree job I got to do to kind of make that happen. We'll talk about that. I thought maybe I'd do it with the uh, little XPG here. It's uh, it's not exactly a giant tree we're cutting down. But today, friends, the last time you guys saw this 288, it, uh, it wasn't oiling at all. Nothing. Zero. I thought it was oiling, friends, but um, I don't think I got any oil onto this bar. So that was bothering me. So today, in between jobs and doing other things, I pulled this thing back apart and... Uh, I noticed it was really hard to get the oil pump off, but it was also really hard to get the oil pump back in. Um, one thing I've noticed now, and anybody that buys these, my my pump in my saw wasn't like this, um, but this one definitely, and again, this is the inconsistencies of the uh, the Chinese parts, um, Farmer Tech parts and stuff like that. Um, the inconsistencies of those parts rear their ugly heads. One thing, friends, and I'm going to show you guys this. This is an OEM oil pump, okay? If you're having trouble putting yours together, your, your pump in, that's how big an OEM oil pump measures. Mine, this was too big, okay? And what was happening, the oil pump wasn't seating all the way, so the the hose wasn't sealing against here and the X-ring wasn't sealing against the body of the saw. And uh, so I was getting no suction on this side and no no pumping on that side. So um, I'm still not exactly sure what setting this pumps on, but uh, it's definitely flowing oil now. And uh, Let's give this thing a little run and then let's go do a little tree job in the yard here. First tree job of the year. It's a big one. But uh, I just want to run this thing and, and see how it is now. It pulled that oilless chain pretty well last time. And we still got, friends, that is white oak uh, over here. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, you guys can see. That is white oak. That's about a three foot piece and it is hard as a rock. Um, definitely a workout for any saw, any chain, and any oiler. So we were pulling this chain through that in the last video with no bar oil. So um, it did pretty well. Anyhow, same bar and chain as last time. I just want to do a couple of cuts, make sure this thing's going to do its thing. And that way, next time I go cutting, I can take this thing. And if it behaves, then I'll put it in a box and mail it to Caleb. Um, it seems to be a good saw. It's easy to start. It's usually a three or four pole cold uh, saw. It was actually really rich this morning, so I know the weather's getting warmer, that's for sure. Um, it didn't want to idle this morning, but uh, other than that, it really hasn't given me any troubles.
Okay, let's fire this thing up and then let's put it in this big log here, or big for Manitoba, and uh, get a cut. thought I'd jump in here. I'm just building this video for you guys. I'm starting to notice at this point that the oiler's just not keeping up. Um, it's You can feel it. It's not slinging a ton of oil. And in this situation, this is where you need a ton of oil. That wood's really dry and really hard. Anyways, I just thought I'd jump in and let you guys know my feelings during this cut. <laughs> Jumping back in here, I took the bar and chain off and turned the oiler up as far as it'll go. It is oiling with the bar and chain off, but um, I'm unsure at this point what the oiler's doing. So I put the bar and chain back on. Let's do another cut. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can see and hear it. Chain's starting to go dull. Oiler's not doing its job. So I'm going to dig through my spares and see if I have a good OEM oiler and start from scratch again. So I just thought I'd show you guys that. This is the game we play with aftermarket or, or old saws. And uh, this one's giving me trouble. So if you're going to buy a FarmerTech 288, prepare to have oiling issues. That's two for two now. That's 100% of the FarmerTech 288s I have have had oil issues. One positive though, this saw didn't get too hot and took that abuse. That's an abusive cut for a power saw. No oiler, just giving her through there. This saw put up with that, no problem. It didn't get too hot. That's good because this is a work saw. It's going to Texas. It's real hot there. And that's precisely the kind of wood that this saw is going to cut. Caleb does large hardwood removals and that's what this saw is going to be used for. Okay, on to the next part of the video. It's amazing what happens when the snow melts. It happens quickly. We're getting there. So when we moved in, friends, this whole backyard would, would flood and stay flooded for most of the summer. I dug... There's a ditch going all the way around to so keep you guys out of the sun. But yeah, all this melts into here. That's like a natural ditch, and then it goes into the ditch next to the road. That melts into the pond. That's our pond. This whole area here, friends, is a big pond. But uh, 
That's why I push it down the hill here with the skid steer. <laughs> Can you tell I drove the wood weasel back through here? We gotta drop a couple trees. But friends, I'm gonna I'm not gonna flip you around because the sun's to my back. But I got a little tree job here I want to do today, and uh, I need to cut all this stuff out of here. I got this, this is a, I believe it's a cottonwood, friends. I need to cut this tree down. This tree's rubbing right here. You see all the damage on the roof. This tree's been rubbing on here. This tree was nothing more than a stick like this when we moved in, but 10 years and all that good drainage off the roof. And, uh, Away we go, so. Anyhow, as you guys can see, it's the old school woven shingles. They, they're in rough shape. They weren't bad when we moved in, but they've gotten worse and worse. You guys can see they keep falling off. But 10 years on. Anyhow, this is the future of my shop, friends. Uh, this building is a good size. Could be bigger, could be smaller, but it needs work. It needs a paint job, a uh, new door. That door is pretty rotten. Um, so, with any luck this year, I'm going to get the this shop in order, or mostly in order. Let's have a look inside. Here's the inside of this shop. It's Quonset building. Got a motorcycle there. How many motorcycles does Tin Man have? Who knows? Anyways, friends, you guys can see there's some light coming through right there. Uh, this roof needs to get done. So my plan for this summer is to get the roof done and get a floor put in this shop. Uh, I need a new door. It's going to be a huge undertaking, but I'm up for the task. But the main thing is I got to get the roof done because the roof's in horrible shape. And this building is still super sound. It has lots of power going to it. Typical farm building. But it does need a new roof. And I want to put concrete in here, friends. It's been 11 years I've been saying this. Well, if I don't get it done, it'll never get done, right? Anyhow, let's cut that little tree down. I brought the little 242 XPG with me. Perfect saw for, for working in such tight quarters. I'm trying to block the sun. Let's fire that thing up and give her a little run. Okay, friends, not the best light in there. I may flip you to the other side. You guys can see there's about a 20-foot sapling in here, and it's got to go. So um, I'm going to fall it. I'm going to fall it that way because um, I think that's the best place for it to go. Take care of it now, and that'll be the first step into getting this roof done. Okay, I'm going to fire up the 242 XPG. I'm just going to slash in here a little bit and then I think I'll move you guys to the other side and uh, get you a better viewpoint of the damage. <laughs> okay, I'm going to fire this thing up. Sorry friends, I whacked you there with a tree. <laughs> Shut you off. The reason why I'm using such a little saw is the tight quarters. Um, better safe than sorry. Okay, this tree's leaning straight that way, so I'm trying not to bounce it off this roof, but if that's what it does, that's what it does. The saw runs good, I like it. It's, uh, it's a nice, light, little saw. And honestly, friends, I don't think there's much difference between this and my 44. I really don't. But my 44 is a muffler mod. Maybe that's what this needs. I'm probably going to high stump this only for one reason. The, the stump has a weird curve to it at the base. Okay, let's get some of these limbs out of the way.
Well, friends, I like this little saw. I do. It's uh, it's light. It's got good RPM. It's torquey. It's easy to start. I mean, what more could a fellow want? Oh, and heated grips work. Both of them. <laughs> You guys believe that? I saw that old. What year is this thing? 1995. That's a first run for me. Nice. That's been a 10 year project. Friends, when you live on a property this size, especially in the shape it was when we got it, um, there's never an end to the chores. I like it though, but it's all got to go inside and it's almost dinner time but one day after work I'll drag the brush out of here and light a little random fire okay friends well figured I'd let you guys see my beautiful face in the sunlight you know I know we all focus on the bigger saws 60 cc and up at least <coughs> but you know once in a while, it is just an absolute pleasure to run such a little saw, and I mean... I can tell this thing's been sitting as I ran it longer, it ran better, but I mean, heated grips on a saw this size, this is 100% a chainsaw that belongs in my truck. I mean, pull it out, turn the heated grips on, you know, and go. So there you guys go, Husqvarna 242 XPG. And uh, friends, I have a dream, and my dream is a larger shop. I would like a larger shop for one reason, and that is I have equipment to work on my skid steer and that, and I can't lift the roof of my skid steer in my current shop. So if I got to work on it in winter, I got to work on it outside. So um, I've always needed, you know, like a 9 to 10 foot ceiling so I can put the boom up and lift the cap. So definitely pretty cool that we're even sitting here talking about the fact that I want to fix this shop it's not going to be perfect it has some issues but I think the roof is sound um, I've done a lot of carpentry and stuff like that I've been in construction my whole life so um, I'm definitely up for the task it's got a good set of bones it just needs to be finished so I'm pretty excited anyhow friends 242 XPG it's time for question of the day. This one comes from Steve K. Steve's working on a Husqvarna 268 non-XP. He wants to replace the piston in his saw, and he wants to know if there's going to be a, a difference between the windowed XP version of the piston and the non-XP, non-windowed version. He wants to know if there's going to be any difference in timing. Honestly, Steve, I haven't worked with the non-XP version enough to say yay or nay. If I was you, I would just order the non-XP piston. And if you're really worried about it, put the wrist pin through your old piston halfway and halfway through the new piston and line them up and check the squish and all that. And honestly, I'd be shocked if there was any difference in the overall dimensions of those pistons. Um... I could be wrong though, but there you go, guys. There's a question that I do not know. If you guys know the answer to that question, please post below and help Steve out. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.